The art of drawing over the skin or tattooing has been with us for thousands of years. Yeah, it is that old. The exact origins of tattoos are difficult to determine, as there is no written record of their early use. However, archaeological evidence suggests that tattooing was practiced by ancient civilizations such as the Egyptians, Greeks, and Romans. The oldest known evidence of tattooing comes from Ötzi the Iceman, a mummy discovered in the Italian Alps in 1991. Ötzi, who lived around 3300 BCE, had 61 tattoos on his body consisting of simple dots and lines. Tattooing was also practiced in ancient China and Japan, where it was used for both decorative and religious purposes. This brings us to today's story about a very peculiar Japanese physician, pathologist and emeritus professor of Nippon Medical School in Tokyo, dubbed the bodysuit collector. His name was Dr. Fukushi Masaichi. He would become fascinated with tattooed skin and its cultural significance, and would start collecting the skin of deceased people for his research. Although, bear in mind, there's nothing nefarious or vile about Dr. Fukushi's interests and practices, as we will elucidate later. Dr. Fukushi Masaichi was born on August 22, 1878, in Kyoto, Japan. He graduated from Tokyo Imperial University of Medicine with a medical degree in 1902. He was studying moles and movement of pigment in human skin when he became mesmerized with the tattooed skin of some of the patients he came in contact with, especially with the traditional Japanese tattoos called irezumi, the word for the decoration of body with flowers, mythical beasts, and other imagery from tales and myths. It was this interest in tattoos, and particularly in the intricate bodysuit style, which led him to become an avid tattooed human skin collector. Dr. Fukushi started collecting the skins while working at the Mitsui Memorial Hospital, a charity hospital in Tokyo, which mainly served to people with low socioeconomic status that had tattooed skin at that period in time. As the patients died of illness or old age, he would perform the autopsies and start retrieving and preserving the skin, a process that was completely voluntary from both ends. During these years, he formed friendships with many tattooed people in Tokyo, and together they formed the Tattoo League of Japan. They would meet in public bathhouses to display their body art to each other and to the doctor. Dr. Fukushi even funded many people's full bodysuits in order for them to get finished, or to finish existing work, as long as he could collect their tattooed skin after their passing. And so, it is clear to see the controversy that surrounded Dr. Fukushi's practices and his collection, but it's important to note again that this was all done in the name of art and beauty and also the preservation of Japanese culture through this form of body art. The process in which they retrieved the skin sounds quite grisly, I must admit. Dr. Fukushi would start by removing the skin off of donated bodies and preserve them by using two methods of conservation the wet and the dry method. Firstly, the body would be meticulously skinned and peeled off, then the nerves and tissues would be scraped off. When using the dry method, the skin would then be stretched out and pinned to dry. The wet preparation method required the skin to be preserved by immersion in either glycerin or formalin. At the height of his research, Dr. Fukushi collected 2,000 tattooed human pelts and documented them with over 3,000 photos. However, much of this bodysuit collection was lost during air raid bombings in 1945, with only 105 still remaining intact to this day. While Dr. Fukushi's collection of tattoos and preserved human skin was in fact a way to preserve Japanese culture, it was also met with controversy and ethical implications. Many people viewed it as a macabre practice, and questioned the ethics of collecting and preserving human skin for research purposes. Despite the controversy surrounding his collection, Masaichi's research on tattoos contributed to the understanding and appreciation of traditional Japanese tattoos. His collection of tattoos and preserved human skin can now be found at the Masaichi Fukushi Museum in Tokyo, which was established in his honor. It's also important to acknowledge both the contributions and the controversies surrounding Dr. Fukushi's life and work. His passion for tattoos and his collection remains a controversial aspect of his legacy, 
but his purpose in doing that and the appreciation he had for this form of body art sort of evens out any bizarre aspect of this practice. In preserving tattooed human skin, he was preserving an important part of the Japanese culture associated and depicted in these tattoos, but also he was preserving real people's life stories and memories. As for his vocation in the medical field, Dr. Fukushi also made various contributions while researching on tuberculosis and atomic radiation, which were significant in advancing medical knowledge during his lifetime. One of the few people that have seen Dr. Fukushi's skin collection in person is legendary tattoo artist Don Ed Hardy. He visited Japan in 1983 upon the invitation of Dr. Fukushi's son, Dr. Katsunari Fukushi, who overtook his father's collection under his care when Dr. Masaichi passed away. Don Ed Hardy documented his visit in his published memoir titled Where Your Dreams, My Life in Tattoos. At the time, the collection included more than 3,000 photographs of tattoos, extensive notes and records from the elder Dr. Fukushi, and over 100 tattooed human skins. Lastly, despite the polemical aspect of Dr. Fukushi's ventures and interests, I think it's crucial to emphasize the desired outcome pouring from this curious practice. With his passion for collecting tattoos, Dr. Masaichi really helped in correcting, or better said, blurring the stigma that surrounds tattooed people in Japan, and the specific connotations that derive from that. He showed that tattoos can have cultural, artistic and spiritual values, and that tattooed people are just people with an interest in this fascinating form of body art, and that's it. Every other notion that hints on these people's backgrounds, their moral values or lack thereof is futile and shouldn't exist to begin with. Thank you for watching.